with my personality type, I tend to be like the overworking, <laughs> over dedicated, just like strong work ethics kind of person. And I'm not saying this to like show off or anything like that. I think this can be a huge character flaw. Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. What life is going to be if you did not have a job or a 9 to 5? Yes, I was there from three to one. It only took me like five years in corporate, but I can finally say I did it. After giving tons of explanation, justification, brainwashing myself into thinking that I should hold on to my job even as a millionaire, I ultimately made the decision that I quit and I am not going back to that life. I am not getting another job. I don't need another backup plan or a lifesaver. I quit in bold letters on my six-figure corporate job, that shiny title, and I am not getting another job. And I also created a roadmap all about how I built my wealth and of course like what steps I took to become a millionaire. So that will also be linked in the info box. So first of all, let's talk about why I quit. So I read this YouTube comment um, from another creator's video and I really, really like it. This is what it says. It says there has been mass quitting through this pandemic because of this mass realization that everything can be taken from you, including your life. So live your best one. I really, really love this comment. It really resonated with me. I think a lot of times we get sucked into the daily grind, the autopilot life, and you just tend to forget about why are you even doing all of this? Like, why are you, you know, clocking in to your job and clocking out every single day and doing the same old routine every single day, trying to make your boss rich. And in the end, you are just living to pay bills. Like you're just living to work. Why are we doing that? Like this just seems so counterintuitive. Some people say, oh, I work so that I can earn money so that I can, you know, buy fancy big houses and, you know, nice garden, nice cars, nice yacht. But in the end, are you really going to be happy after buying yourself into happiness or buying yourself a happier life? It doesn't work like that. And as a millionaire, I can tell you that I am a millionaire. And ironically, I'm also, well, kind of ironically, I'm also depressed. I also have depression. They're not related, but I'm just saying that just because you're rich or you're a millionaire or you have a certain amount of money does not make you all of a sudden magically not depressed, um, make you magically happy. So the main reason why I quit is because I realized that I don't want to live this working or yeah, working myself to the bone in order to get a maybe in terms of happiness. And, you know, after accumulating a certain level of wealth, I realized that wealth and happiness, they're not always correlated. Yes, it does make your life easier. Even when you are a depressed millionaire, you can still use your money to get the medical attention that you need, the medical care that you need. You can still, you know, get the doctors. You can still afford to not work during the time when you're trying to get better, but it does not make you not depressed. It doesn't make you bulletproof. And so I just don't see myself working myself to the bone again for like another five, 10, even 50 years, because I don't think that aligns with my ultimate goal, which is just to live a fulfilling life. And I'm sure a lot of people just have the same goal. They just want to live a fulfilling life. And I don't think, you know, working yourself to the bone will get you there. And let's talk about how I quit, right? So technically, very technically, I was actually let go. And so I might be sharing a little bit more in the future about this since this is still kind of fresh, but I was let go. But this is why I say I quit because I did quit that nine to five lifestyle. Could I have gotten another job? Probably, very likely, because I do have a pretty strong background. I did graduate college and get into Big Four Accounting immediately. Uh, I first got the Big Four Accounting internship, and then I got the full-time offer in my senior year, and then I just got into Big Four immediately. And around a year or two after college, I was already making six figures. So that is kind of like my career path. So, of course, I can very likely get another job, but there is a huge reason why I decided to not get another job. 
And it is because I asked myself this question, getting another job, would that make me at all more fulfilled or happier? Not likely. So that is why I ultimately decided to not get another job. And fortunately, because I have built some assets, some net worth while I was working for the past couple of years, I'm also able to have the freedom to so-called retire early and retire from that nine to five grind. And here's the truth. With my personality type, I tend to be like the overworking, over dedicated, just like strong work ethics kind of person. And I'm not saying this to like show off or anything like that. I think this can be a huge character flaw because especially at times when you are working for someone else, you're not necessarily growing your own wealth. Like it doesn't matter how hard you work, you probably just get paid the same salary. That is usually what happens. And the people who get the promotions, they're probably not the ones who work the hardest. If you really notice like, those people around you. And so it's not necessarily a good thing. And why I say it's a character flaw is that if I were not let go, if I were not fired, then I probably would not fire myself. I probably would not quit the job because I just have the tendency to hold on. Like even with relationships in the past, like I would hold on to really toxic relationships just because there is someone there and there is that, you know, sunken cost fallacy and I've spent time with this person and I just don't want to let things go so easily. Same thing with my job. Like I was burned out for a long, long time. Like last year, I remember my grandpa passed away and I really wanted to be at his funeral, but I couldn't because it was quarter end closed. And as someone in finance, quarter end closed is like really, really important. And I thought that was more important than my grandpa's funeral. And so long story short, I did not attend my grandpa's funeral. I missed it because of work. But then of course I did not feel good about it at all. Money is replenishable. Time is not. Time with, time with family is definitely not replenishable. Until this day, I regret it. And that is one of my triggers that really ultimately led into my depression and anxiety. And that also led me to, you know, take even more time off of work because I was basically forced to take sick leave and I was forced to not work because I was just not in the state to work. I was literally just on my computer and I would just, I would just cry. I would just look at Excel spreadsheets and I would just cry for no reason. And that's when I know it's odd because there's nothing touching about Excel spreadsheet. There is nothing that should make you cry, but I just started crying. And that was the moment when I realized something was wrong with me. And that was the moment when I seeked for medical help. And that was the moment when I realized that I actually have anxiety and depression and PTSD. And that was also the moment when I took a bunch of meds just to be a lab rat and test out what the freak is wrong with me. And of course, that ultimately led me into, you know, what is happening today, which is I quit that nine to five grind. I don't think it is the right thing for me and I am not getting myself another job. I'm interrupting my own episode to invite you to my live masterclass on early retirement. This is my only live class I'm hosting in 2021, and it teaches you exactly how to plan your early retirement and retire from anything that no longer serves you. So I mentioned that it is free. To sign up, simply head over to cherrytongue.co forward slash one, two, two, three, two, one. The link is also in the show notes. And now let's talk about my plan. Since we talked about, you know, why I quit, how I quit, the little background about, you know, the whole story that led to eventually quitting or being forced to quit, but not getting another nine to five job. Here's my plan. My plan is to focus on my business and my business is of course YouTube is one one leg of my business so think of this as like an octopus or something my YouTube is one leg of my business I also do IG reels uh TikTok so social media these are some legs and uh some of my other income streams like brand partnership affiliate marketing core sales um these are some other income streams of course my investments I also have rental property so that is also some of my other income streams and this is the beauty of you know having income that does not depend on you like to be actively there working whereas for a lot of jobs normally you have to be there working that is why i am such a firm believer of having as many passive income streams as you can sure in the beginning it might be difficult it might take time to set up but this is ultimately something you can depend on even if you one day like get sick like what i did because life is so unpredictable if there's anything that we've learned from the pandemic is that life is so unpredictable we never know what happens next and so I still remember like I was forced to take time off of work, but then 
at the same time, I realized that, hey, at least I have income coming in, even though I was not really working. I still had income coming in for my investments, for my rental properties. So that is definitely like a really beautiful thing to have to know that you can be asleep, you can be sick, you can take time off, you can spend time with family and you can still make money. So that is going to be what I'm focusing on. But I'm also changing my perspective because I realized that there is a freaking pattern. And that is my huge character flaw of just over dedicating myself to the task at hand. And sure, when I'm working for myself, like sure, um, the harder I work, maybe potentially the more I'll get paid because I'm not just making someone else rich. But at the same time, I also have to keep in mind that I'm human and I do suffer from depression. This is something that I have. It is not necessarily my identity. Like, I don't think I'm just like depression or I am just depressed. I don't like to say I'm depressed. I like to say I have depression because I don't think this is necessarily like my identity. This is just something I happen to have. And so I still have to get better from it. I still have to heal myself. I'm trying to get off my meds now because I really feel like my meds are clogging my brain or clouding my thoughts. So that is also something that I'm doing. That is why I do plan to focus more on being a full-time entrepreneur, but at the same time, I am not working like what I used to work before at my nine to five, like working like 50, 80, 90 hour work weeks and working past my lunch and dinner and working through the weekends. Like, I just don't think that's sustainable. And I don't think that is really like a long-term game. I don't think that's a long-term strategy. And ultimately, I just want to say that I think life really happens for a reason. I really do think that without my previous experience of being burnt out and missing my grandpa's funeral, like as bad as that is, without those experiences, I wouldn't be depressed. And without, you know, my experience, my, without my experience of being depressed, I probably wouldn't have taken time off of work. And without taking time off of work, I probably wouldn't have the time or space to reflect on what have I really been doing? Like, as much as I want to believe in the good in humanity, I also do think that the system is designed to make workers replaceable or else the system wouldn't work because we have to make sure that the only one who's not replaceable, quote unquote, is the CEO, is the boss, and everyone else is replaceable. Or else, like, imagine a company that only depends on its workers and if its workers quit, then the whole company goes down. Like, that wouldn't be a very successful business model. And so thinking about it that way, it does make sense that everyone is basically replaceable. And it kind of, you know, hurts to think that way because you want to be treated as a human being. Like, I want to be treated as a human being. But the situation is that really, like, HR, they have the company's best interest, not you. Your boss, they probably have the company's best interest, not you. And so you have to put yourself first. You have to really put your best interest, like keep your best interest in mind because no one else would. And also like, as I've mentioned, money is replenishable, time is not. And so don't sacrifice family time for work because there will always be work. Like, trust me, there will always be work. But if you miss time with family, that can never come back. And of course, that can also bury like a time bomb in your system and it can go off all of a sudden, just like how it happened to me. And that was what ultimately led to just me crying in front of my Excel spreadsheets. And ultimately I say life happens for a reason because sure, like initially when I got the news that I got fired, I felt betrayed. I like high key felt betrayed because I worked for this company for years. I have been with this company and literally witnessed the stock price 10x like there there were a lot of memories and i did a lot for this company but ultimately i realized that the company is just doing what is best for it and as much as i hate it as much as i feel like it's unfair as much as i feel like i've been mistreated ultimately i think it's good for me too because i was just waiting for that signal i was just waiting for that sign for me to quit my job but i know that with my personality how like over dedicated i tend to get with my like crazy work ethics, I just don't think I'm the type to quit. I'm just not the type to, you know, be the one who lets go. And like, ultimately, I think it's a really good thing that they fired me because if they didn't fire me, I wouldn't be able to quit on my own. And because they fired me, they literally like forced me out of that position. I then feel like I have the choice to not get another job because like, you know, this is a sign, God gave me a sign and I am not getting 
another job now and it's been around I want to say one two months after the incident I I must say like initially I was really 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 hurt and I felt really betrayed but now I feel a lot better because I am just getting this newfound freedom I no longer have to worry about like what my coworkers think about me or what my boss thinks about me or you know what does my social media presence have to do with like their perception of me and what I can or cannot say online like I no longer have to worry about that and I feel like I can truly be myself I can be more comfortable I sometimes sleep till noon and I'm okay like I'm alive I'm still making money I'm still keeping myself alive these newfound freedom they are what makes life so amazing in my opinion and I wouldn't be able to have any of these if I still worked my nine-to-five job I wouldn't be able to have all this freedom and I wouldn't be able to let's say have this burst of creativity and I can jump into content creation like at times when I feel creative but it's during work hours I literally cannot just you know film a video or can I just post something online because I don't want people to think that I'm not working even though I know I'm working but other people don't know. My brain is still a little scattered um, about this whole thing like how I quit my job without a backup plan without another job but I just want to say that ultimately like you have to keep yourself accountable you have to love yourself first because no one would love you more than you no one would care about your well-being more than you and so never put work over family never put work over your health and ultimately keep in mind that even though HR or your company policy or you know your company culture they can say all these great things but most businesses like I want to say 99.99% of the businesses that I see they just have their own best interest like they don't have your best interest you have to have your best interest or else no one can uh, can give you that no one can put yourself before them because people are just selfish and overworking does not necessarily get you a promotion does not necessarily get you more pay and the only thing that it is pretty much guaranteed to give you is burnout just keep that in mind this turned kind of dark but I just want to you know give you a raw truth I feel like a lot of people they're not telling you the raw truth and it really irritates me I just want to be real here this is the raw truth I quit that big for um, not just big four I quit that nine-to-five lifestyle I quit my six-figure job without a backup plan and I did not just quit I also got forced out um, they also let go of me because of my work performance that's my life <laughs> thank you so much for allowing me the chance to be real with you and let me know what are your thoughts if you are in the same position or if you've been in the same position or if you can relate to my story. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode. Tagging me at cherrytongue.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.